Once upon a time, there was a couple who, when they were still rich, had no children at all. When they were bankrupt and poor, they gave birth to a son. But because they were so poor, no one accepted to be the child and number 39's godfather. The husband told his wife, I will go somewhere else to see if there is anyone who will sponsor me. On the way, he met someone who asked him where he was going. He said, he went to see if anyone would accept him as a godfather. The other person said, you guys are poor, I and number 39, am also poor. I would like to be your godfather, but I have nothing to give you. Go home, tell the midwife to take you to church. When everyone arrived at the church, the other man was waiting there. The godfather named the baby Ferdinand Getreu. When everyone left the church, the godfather said, Well, just go home. I have nothing for you. You Don and number 39, T need to give me anything. The godfather gave the midwife a key and told him to give the key to the baby and number 39 s father when the boy turns 14 years old give him the key it holds the key to the step where there is a castle it can get the key to open the castle door that castle belongs to the sun seven years have passed one day the baby sat and played with his friends listening to them tell about the things his godfather gave him Feeling sorry for himself, the baby cried and went home. He asked his father, why didn't an hash 39, t my godfather give me anything? The father said, yes, you have the key, take it and go to the step. There is a castle, take the key to open the castle. The child went out to the step, but did not see any castle. Another seven years passed. Now the child was 14 years old, and he went out to the step again. It is true that there is a castle in the step. The boy opened the gate, there was nothing in the castle except the white horse. The boy was happy because he now had a horse. He jumped on his horse and rode back to his father. He thought to himself, now I also have a white horse, I can ride it and travel the world. Along the way he saw a brush, he wanted to pick it up, but then stopped, because he thought he would still see the brush. Suddenly he heard someone say, Honest Ferdinand, pick up the brush. He looked around but saw no one. He bent down to pick up the brush. After walking some distance, he came to a river bank. He saw a fish lying on the bank yawning. He said, Wait, dear fish, I will let you into the water. He held the fish and dropped it into the water. The fish raised its head and said, You saved me from the mud, I want to give you a flute. Whenever you have trouble, just pick up the flute and play and I will come to help you. If anything falls into the water, you play the flute and I will come and get it for you. He had been riding his horse for a while when someone came and asked him where he was going. He said, well, I want to go to the area nearby. So what in number 39, s your name? Ferdinand is honest. The other person said, my name is similar to yours. My name is dishonest Ferdinand. Then the two of them made their way there and stayed at an inn. The bad thing is that Ferdinand cannot honestly read other people and number 39's thoughts and actions, because he knows many types of magic spells. In the inn there was a bright and beautiful girl. She fell in love with the handsome and honest Ferdinand. She asked him where he was going. Ferdinand honestly said he wanted to travel the world. The girl said that Ferdinand was honest so he should stay. The king is in need of a servant or a guide. He replied that he was inconvenient to come. The girl said, oh, 
I will come and ask for it for you. The girl came to tell the king that there was a young man who wanted to be a servant in the palace. The king invited the honest Ferdinand to be his servant. But the young man wanted to be a guide, to always live with his white horse. The king then made him his guide. Upon hearing that news, the dishonest Ferdinand ran to the girl and said, Why do you help him, and not me? Okay, I and number 39, LL help you too. The girl replied like that, but in her heart she thought, and quat, I can and number 39, T trust this person, I can and number 39. T consider him a friend. And quat. Then she also went to the king to ask him to be a servant. The king also accepted. Every morning, when Ferdinand was dishonestly dressing the king, the king often said, Oh, how good it would be if the person we love were with us. The dishonest Ferdinand was jealous of the honest Ferdinand. So once, when the king complained again, he said, Your Majesty has a guide. Your Majesty, please send him to fetch the person you love. If he can and number 39, T do it, then Your Majesty, cut off his head and let it fall to your feet. The king called the honest Ferdinand and said, Go pick up your beloved person who lives in that faraway country and bring him back to the palace. If you don and number 39, T do it, you will be beheaded. Ferdinand honestly went to the stables, stood there crying and lamenting to his white horse. Oh, what an unfortunate man I am. Suddenly there was a voice behind him. Honest Ferdinand, why are you crying? The young man looked around, but saw no one, so he lamented again. Oh. My dear white horse, I have to leave you. And this time, maybe I can escape death. Another voice said, Honest Ferdinand, why are you crying? Only then did the boy realize that it was the white horse that was asking him. Dear white horse, it was you who asked, right? You know how to talk, right? Then he continued, and quat. I have to go to that faraway place to pick up the king and number 39's fiancé. Do you know how I should start? And quat. The white horse replied, You should go and report to the king and say, If you have all the necessary things, you will go pick her up. The king had to give him a boat full of bread. There are giants in the sea. If you don and number 39, T give them meat, they will tear you apart. There are also big birds there. If you don and number 39, T have bread, they will peck you blind. The king ordered slaughterhouses and bakeries throughout the country to worry about how to fill a boat full of meat and a boat full of bread. When there was enough meat and bread, the white horse told Ferdinand honestly, now ride your horse to the boat. When he met the giants, he said, Calm down, calm down, my dear giants. I know I will meet you guys. Should have brought gifts here for you. When he saw the birds flying towards him, he said, Calm down, calm down, my dear birds. I knew you would come, so I brought you a gift. They won and number 39, T do anything to you. When you get to the princess and number 39, S palace, the giants will help you. He took several giants with him. The princess is sleeping in there. He did not need to wake her, but told the giants to carry her and her bed to the boat. Everything happened just as the white horse said. Ferdinand honestly brought meat and bread to the giants and birds, so the giants agreed to carry the princess and her bed down to the boat. The boat went straight to the king. When she arrived at the king, the princess said that the writing utensils were still in her palace, without which she could not live. 
Incited by the dishonest Ferdinand, the king ordered that the honest Ferdinand must go to the palace to get those things for the princess. Otherwise he would be beheaded. The young man went to the stable again, crying and saying, Oh my God, my dear white horse. Now we have to go again. What should we do? The white horse said, The boat must be filled with meat and bread. Then everything happened just like last time, when the giants and the big birds ate their fill of meat and bread, he would be safe and sound. When he arrived, he was alone in the palace, the princess and number 39's writing utensils were in her bedroom. Ferdinand honestly entered the palace and obtained those things. When he reached the river bank, the pen fell into the water again. At that time, the white horse said, This time I have no way to help you anymore. He suddenly remembered the flute, so he took it out and played. Immediately the fish appeared, holding a pen in its mouth, swimming back and giving it to him. He brought the princess and number 39's writing utensils back to the king and number 39's palace. The king and number 39's wedding was celebrated. The queen did not love the king, because he had no nose, but she loved the honest Ferdinand. One time, when all the court officials were present, the queen said that she had a special talent of being able to cut off a person and number 39's head and put it back together again, as long as someone dared to let her try it for everyone to see. Dot. No one wanted to give it a try. The dishonest Ferdinand instigated the king, causing the honest Ferdinand to step out. The queen cut off the boy and number 39's head, then reattached it. The wound healed immediately, only a pink mark was visible on the neck. The king said to the queen, Dear queen, where did you learn this? The queen said, I know this magic. Let me also try it with your majesty once. Okay. The king said. After cutting off the king and number 39's head, the queen did not put it back together properly, as if she could not do so, and it seemed that the head refused to heal. So the king was buried. She and Ferdinand faithfully married each other. He was still riding his white horse. One time while he was riding, the white horse said, Go out to that meadow and ride three times. He did as he was told, then suddenly the white horse stood up straight on its hind legs, and turned into a prince. Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.